All right. All right, so I'm going to be going over how to use the Shimatsu UVVIS 1800 that we have in our lab in 224. But before I do that, I just want to cover some of the basics of UVVIS. So this is just like a basic schematic of the architecture of what a UVVIS looks like. So there's a light source, um, a monochromator just to split the light into the wavelength that you're interested in viewing. And then it goes to the exit slit, the sample, which then absorbs the wavelength. And then there is light that goes is transmitted through the sample and then detected. Um, so on the right, that's the Beer-Lambert's law. And so the beauty of it is that you can have a linear relationship between absorbance and concentration. And they get that by taking the log of the present transmittance that is going through the sample and detected on the other side over here. So um, the one that we have in our lab actually has a beam splitter in order to have light pass through the sample as well as through a reference slot. Um, and then that's how you can take the ratio of the incident light going through the reference sample the reference cuvette in comparison to the sample cuvette at the bottom. So our instrument looks like this. And then that's where the samples go. We have two different holders. We have one for um, just substrates, so glass um, substrates that I know Corbin typically uses in the lab, um, as well as four cuvettes. So the one on the left is the one for the, the slides. And then the one on the right is for our cuvettes. And so the slot on the back is the one that we use to put our reference sample in. And then the one on the front is for the sample of interest or the unknown. And so to take a single spectrum, um, first you want to press F4. So in order to have PC control, you have to press F4. Then you go into the computer and then there's this software called UV Probe and it's on the desktop, very easy to find. Um, but after that, you just have to click on connect here. I had already connected, so that's why it says, it says disconnect, but it would show up as connect as soon as you click F4 on the instrument itself. Then once you have the reference sample and the cuvette, as well as the sample, like both of them being blank, then you would want to auto zero the instrument and then click on baseline. And it also, also shows you a window where you can um, set the wavelength range that you're interested in. So normally I go from, uh, 190 to 1,100, and then you just click start. Um, this window just shows the absorbance real time as you scan the sample. And just for reference, I have up here a single scan of my mesalamine. It's 10 micrograms of mesalamine per milliliter. And so in my case, um, it has a pretty uh, sharp peak at around 300 nanometers, as well as one in like the 200 nanometer range. And so as I increase the concentration of my mesalamine in the cuvette, I get a higher peak um, once I have 25 micrograms per milliliter. And so you can also click on this button at the top to show this table here on the left. Um, and you can label peaks as well. So in this case, one corresponds to my 300 nanometer wavelength, um, which is these two peaks up here. Um, and then it just automatically labels the other peaks and tells you what the absorbance is for each of them. So that way you can take the data and then analyze an origin. Um, there's also this other window that you can access um, under spectrum methods. And so you can change um, the measuring mode. You can do absorbance, transmittance, energy or reflectance. I typically leave it at absorbance. And I guess for my experiments in particular, I'm interested in doing time scans just to see the release rate of my a uh, compound of interest over time. So that's also an option with the Shimatsu 1800. So the only difference is that rather than having this single scan button at the top clicked, you would click the one that's pointed with the arrow. And so that allows you to scan uh, the absorbance over time. So you would just set the total time here at this box. And then if you have it in auto, it automatically just sets the cycle time and the number of readings for you. But if you wanted to change that, you just click on manual and then you can manually change the accumulation times as well as the integration time. Uh, and then to access this window, you would just have to click on this M here at the top. And that's what you get. So you just get the increase in absorbance over a period of time. And then to get the raw data, you just save the file. You can save a text file after you get your data. Um, to access this data print, you also have to print 
sorry, click on the data print table up here on this button on the toolbar. And that's it.